Hello everyone. This is uh, Rahul Singh, CIO Equities at Tata Mutual Fund. Uh, I think in everyone's mind, uh, of all the listeners, there's one doubt which must be cropping up at this point in time, which is what happens if this wave becomes very big? Uh, what happens if there is economic stuff like last year? So I'm going to talk mostly on on what we see happening with different corporates, what we see happening in different sectors and how we see this wave as being different from the first wave. Uh, I think when we looked at the 2020, the first COVID wave, it was a shock and therefore businesses had to be shut down abruptly. Uh, nobody had an idea how to adapt to the situation. Now the situation is very different. I think uh, first of all, the governments are taking a more measured approach towards lockdown rather than a complete lockdown. It's more need-based. Secondly, I think businesses have gotten used to working in a hybrid model, uh, semi-work from home, work from office. Also, the businesses have become more digital. Delivery has become more digital. Uh, the economic activity has become more digital. And I think manufacturing capacities in general have become more adapt to handling COVID infections and working in an environment where uh, COVID is around. Uh, because one thing is becoming clear that uh, irrespective of the vaccination drive, um, what is becoming very clear is that the virus is probably going to remain longer uh, in, in, in the air. And uh, therefore, while vaccination will catch up and reduce the uh, rate of infections in due course, it is also evident that our habits need to change and we would need to be continue uh, to be safe and uh, taking adequate precaution for the next one year, which means frequent disruptions, which means some hit to the economic growth rate. Uh, but let me just focus on why I think a minor impact on the economic growth is not going to create a major impact on the earnings. First is the evidence. I mean, if you look at uh, fiscal 2021, which is the last fiscal year, it was very clear that even when economic growth rate has declined, roughly about say 7-8% uh, last fiscal year. The earnings estimate or the profit estimates for the large corporates or the index constituents, uh, so to say, has almost grown by about 7-8%. So we are actually uh, seeing a growth in the profitability for the companies, irrespective of the fact that the uh, GDP growth rate has come down 7-8%. Now, instead of the next year's GDP growth rate, the Instead of 12, 11, 12 percent, if it is 10 percent, uh, will it create a significant drag on the profitability estimates or the profit growth estimates for the Indian corporates? I don't think so. And, and I think that is where the advantage of uh, investing in Indian equities is. Um, it is a different matter that the valuations are approaching fair valuation, and therefore we see broad basing of the market and uh, the market's becoming more stock pick rather than uh, huge sector uh, level moves. But um, from a return point of view and from a micro point of view, when I say micro, I'm specifically referring to the profit estimates for the Indian corporates. I don't see it getting significantly impacted if there is a minor 1-2% slippage in the economic growth rate for next year, which is now possible given that we are and whether we like it or not, there is going to be some impact. Last but not the least, I think the banking system in India, which everyone feared would be severely impacted last year when uh, the first wave was just uh, on its way to becoming a big pandemic, the banks are now adequately provided. Uh, we have seen certain banks uh, coming up from despite the fact that the impact on the stressed loan assets has not been as severe as we were forecasting. So if you look at everything together and if you look at the, uh, the drivers of earnings growth rate which is now coming from commodities, real estate, lower interest rates, manufacturing um, and of course banking stress being not as bad as what is feared and also the two sectors which are actually benefiting from this IT and pharma. Uh, we are confident that the profit estimate or the cut in the profit estimates because of the second wave might be minimal. And I think that gives uh, enough proof that the markets will find support at lower levels. 
we will continue to see uh, volatility and uh, shallow corrections along the way because as i said valuations are approaching fair value but from a longer term perspective i think uh, the markets will track earnings growth rate from these valuation levels and that means that if the nominal gdp growth rate is between 10 to 15% that is the kind of uh, equity returns one expect for a long duration of no. time so i would urge the investors to stay invested use uh, opportunities uh, caused by uh, news flow to uh, to keep increasing investments in a piecemeal manner and stay invested uh, in the course and also if uh, there is there is a need then de-risk the portfolio a little bit by moving into the hybrid and 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 to all the investors who are uh, feeling a little bit nervous or want to reduce the risk in equities i would strongly urge not moving out of equities completely but rather moving into funds like the hybrid funds which includes balanced advantage fund hybrid funds as well as the arbitrage funds uh, in order to de-risk the portfolio in the short term um, but i think the overall trajectory remains uh, upwards uh, we will have minor steps like we have seen some of the things around covid are not really predictable so just to end uh, thank you very much for listening and uh, stay safe and on behalf of Tata Mutual Fund, I wish you all the best and a very prosperous uh, Mutual Fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.